What is up, ghouls? This is the very first episode of Concerning Yet Charming, and I am your host, Emily Miller. Now, the first episode to kick off this podcast, I thought should be something I've always been interested in going to visit, and something that's been covered by, like, Ghost Hunters, which is the St. Augustine Lighthouse located in St. Augustine, Florida. If you're unfamiliar, St. Augustine is the place that Ponce de Leon thought the Fountain of Youth was at. But today, we're going to go over a little bit of history about the St. Augustine Lighthouse, and I'm going to tell you about some of the ghost stories many people have heard of and interacted with. I will apologize ahead of time if I butcher some of these names. They're Italian names, and I don't speak Italian. I am a good old southern girl from South Kakalaki. Anyway, here we go. So the St. Augustine Lighthouse has origins dating back to 1589, where an Italian cartographer, Giovanni Beozio, please tell me if you know how that is pronounced. Let me know in the comments. His map is the first documented archival reference of a wooden watchtower at the end of Anastasia Island. Somewhere in the late 1720s, early 30s, a Spanish captain, Juan de Leon, reportedly cut off the left ear of British Captain Robert Jenkins after accusations of smuggling. On the night of New Year's Eve 1782, some 16 ships wrecked during a nor'easter while attempting to enter the harbor, according to Thomas Graham's Awakening of St. Augustine, on May 11, 1874, First Lieutenant Richard H. Pratt assumed custody of 72 Native American prisoners and escorted them by train to St. Augustine. Separated from their families, the distraught prisoners starved themselves or perished on the journey. One was shot attempting to escape in 1970. Now, I don't know about you, but all that sounds like a recipe for a haunting from spirits that are not quite happy if I had to guess that they are still there. So now we have a little backstory about some ghosts you might see wandering around, all that. But I'm going to tell you about the two most talked about sightings for ghosts. Um, These actually did come from like the St. Augustine Lighthouse website. These are the two most well-known hauntings that I believe they have there. So we're going to start with the PT girls. So soon after Congress appo- appro- approved, you know, sometimes I just can't speak and apparently today is going to be one of those days. But soon after Congress approved money to build a new tower, superintendent of a lighthouse construction, Hezekiah Pitti, moved from Cape Elizabeth, Maine with his family to oversee construction of the new St. Augustine Lighthouse. Remember, it was burned down in a fire. Earlier we talked about it. But his children often played in the construction site, which I I know it's like back in the old days, you know, but I don't feel like your kids should be playing around in the construction site then or now. But his children often played in the construction site with other workers' children, and they loved using the railway carts as roller coasters, riding them down to the shoreline. Well, on July 10th, 1873, Hezekiah picked his three daughters, Mary, who was 15, Eliza, 13, and Carrie, 4, along with an unknown African-American girl, 10, went to play with the railway cart as usual. However, the wooden board that usually stopped the car from going into the ocean was not in the place, was not in its proper place. The cart flipped and trapped the girls under it and in the water. Mr. Dan Sessions, a young African-American worker, witnessed the event and raced to the water. When he reached the cart, he lifted it from atop the girls. By this time, three of the four girls had drowned. The only survivor was the youngest, Carrie. To this day, no one has found the unknown African-American girl's final resting place. So that's the backstory of the Petit Girls. But a relief lighthouse keeper living in the home in the 1950s, which, mind you, that's nearly 100 years, give or take, you know, 30, 33-ish, after 
the girl's death, reported hearing footsteps upstairs to investigate reported hearing footsteps upstairs. He went to investigate, but no one was up there. And another sighting of the Pitty Girls, a local man who crafted leather goods, rented the property during the 1960s. He tells the story of waking up one night with a small girl standing by his bed. As he blinked his eyes to look at her, she disappeared. Now, the girls are known as playful spirits, not really malevolent. They enjoy playing hide-and-seek sometimes, including unsuspecting people. And on one occasion, in the dark lighthouse tower, a lone staff member was closing up for the night. He heard giggling at the top of the tower. Thinking that he had left someone on top of the tower, he returned to the top to find it empty. As he began to head back down the tower, he heard the same giggles below him, descending to the bottom. He once again found no one there. Was it just the wind? Or was he in the midst of a game of hide-and-seek? I guess only the pity girls will know. Now, another spirit that I couldn't really find a backstory on, it's referred to as the man. He's often seen dressed in a blue jacket and mariner's cap, walking his route up and down the spiral staircase or looking down from above the catwalk. And that kind of reminds me of there was a Ghost Hunters episode where they were in the lighthouse and Jay, I believe, the two main guys, like Jay and Greg, I think are their names, were looking up where the spiral staircase is and they saw someone look over the railing at them. They went to go find it. There's no one there. Maybe it was this guy. Maybe it was the man. But anyway... He's, he has a tall, thin frame, and that leaves some to believe he is the ghost of William Russell, a, protect, a protective and dutiful lighthouse keeper from the 1850s. But others think he's going to be Joseph Andrew, who fell from the top of a scaffolding in 1859 while putting on a, French, a fresh coat of paint. Now, the last really big, not like big, but, you know, one of the more prominent figures that still hangs around the lighthouse is what people refer to as the woman on the catwalk. Maria Mestre de los Dolores stands out for more reasons than just her recent ghostly sightings. In 1859, she was not only the first woman to serve in the U.S. Coast Guard, but she also became the first Hispanic American woman to command a federal shore installation, the St. Augustine Lighthouse. Her appointment came after the formerly mentioned Joseph Andrew. He met his fateful end, as we talked about, falling from the catwalk. Maria was heartbroken, left on the island to follow in the very same footsteps her husband had once walked, and even was to known to stand at the edge of the catwalk, looking down to where her husband's body had once laid. She still found there on occasion, leaning over the railing and imagining what those last few seconds of Joseph's life had been like. And this also reminds me, I was in marching band in high school, and we did a show called The Lady in the Lighthouse that was based off of the St. Augustine Lighthouse. But in that, she jumped off. I wonder if it's based on this lady on the catwalk. Anyway, that's all I have for you ghouls today. But if you have any stories, any encounters from the St. Augustine Lighthouse that you would like to share, and I can maybe make an episode up about uh, about listener experiences with the lighthouse, please send them into concerningyetcharming at gmail.com. And we'll see you in the next one.